All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, an approach, basically, to migrate applications, to migrate enterprise applications into uh, OpenStack. So, konnichiwa to our Japanese friends. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. I'm uh, Arthur Berezin uh, from Gigaspaces, working on a cool product named uh, Cloudify. So, hello Tokyo. Very, very excited to be here. Uh, you know, obviously, never, never, never thought I would be uh, in Tokyo for the OpenStack event. And for me, actually, this is very exciting for two main reasons. First of all, I drive this car I really, really love by Honda, which is a Japanese car. So thank you, Japanese guys, for, for making this. I'm really, you know, if you read the specs and if you're into cars, you'll be you'll you'll definitely, you know, enjoy the specs. And I think this is a true, you know, true show showcase of great engineering. So I'm super excited, uh, you know, for, for being here and being part of this community and basically making the Japanese guys, uh, making you guys basically um, core members of the OpenStack community and basically help us uh, build this community and build this, this, this uh, platform uh, to be way more stable and way, uh, way more approachable to, to everyone. So one thing to note, though, I'm not the driver. <laughs> if you're in for law enforcement, uh, this is not me. <laughs> And the second reason I'm super excited to be here because I'm basically announcing a, a book I wrote about OpenStack production, named uh, Production Ready OpenStack, uh, where basically you can, can find uh, multiple recipes on how you configure OpenStack, use multiple components, configure LDAP, configure various cool things. So I'd like to thank uh, Gigaspaces, Red Hat, uh, Live Person, and, and Matrix in Israel. You know, this is my personal path I took, uh, and this is what made it uh, happen for me. So I'm um, raffling free books. Uh, if you uh, follow me on Twitter and just you know tag me on whatever you would like, uh, I'll be raffling some some free copies. And you have also promotion codes. Don't hesitate to use them. So today I'm going to focusing on 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 several things uh, for migrating uh, applications into OpenStack. So I'm going to talk about uh, various approaches, or a few uh, approaches I've been hearing around, and basically we've been hearing around in the OpenStack community. Uh, our approach with, with, with Cloudify, basically our, our orchestration-oriented approach, and discuss some use cases uh, that we've seen with, with customers actually, you know, making, uh, making the migration seamless and work. So if we if you look at the application uh, level, uh, if you look at the application level vision, and you know how would we envision applications to be deployed on cloud? So you know we've obviously seen this this uh, major shift in in mindshare actually uh, in the past I think five or more years where we basically have everything as an API, right? So all the infrastructure, all the services, all the new products, all the new cool open source projects that are coming out, everything is available through an API. And this, this basically allows us to automate everything and make everything seamless, you know, kind of like the revolution that the car industry was going through. So, you know, instead of making each and every car by hand and having a long assembly line and, you know, having a human error margin, et cetera, et cetera. So this allows to make everything automated and, 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 and basically uh, way, uh, way faster deployed. But there, there's also the, another aspect to that, and basically this enables awareness and reaction to self to, to the application itself. And this is actually the missing the, the missing piece in the puzzle that we have not achieved so far. So you know we build applications; they are automated, but it would be really awesome if they would be able to to know that they're running an OpenStack, if they'd be able to know that they're running on VMware, if they're using specific configurations. And basically, would be able to react to what's going on. So, if you have a node failing, if you need to scale out, if you need to scale up, for example, you know whatever the case needed to, to be, whatever the measures needed to be taken to, for, from the application side, it would be really awesome if the application could automatically react based on what's going on. Basically, know on what's what's going on underneath it. So, you know, coming down a little bit from the vision, from this grand vision of having self-aware applications. Uh, so the reality is we have multiple applications and all the applications basically have multi-tier architecture. You have databases, you have location servers, front-ends, firewalls, DMCs, you know, you have 
tons of these components uh, in place, right? And basically, all of them are hardwired to the infrastructure they're running on. So if you used to have a VMware cluster, and if you're now, uh, you know, most of the environments I've seen so far with OpenStack as well, when you deploy a new application into OpenStack, the configurations and the code and everything that you, all the work that you do to, 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 to provision that, that application on OpenStack, you basically tie that application to the specific environment. And so, Having said that, and you know, if you look at, uh, at various uh, migration paths that, that we've been hearing uh, around, so if you like go quickly over some methods, obviously there are many, many more methods of, of migrating applications to OpenStack from existing clouds uh, today. So uh, just to quickly cover some of the some of the approaches. So manual migration, you know, it's kind of like the most obvious one, and you know, it might seem easy at the beginning, but it's never easy because everything is always usually uh, hardwired and configured to a specific environment. So, you know, if you take one application that runs an open, on, on VMware, for example, and you would like to move it to, to OpenStack, you would have to, first of all, you know, f just for yourself, to map out the whole, the whole topology and, and the architecture of the application. Obviously, you have multiple components, you have storage, you have networking, you have lots and lots of bits and bytes that you need to take care of, and once you take care of them, uh, you migrate each of, the, each of those components for that architecture into OpenStack and basically hardwire again, creating basically the same problem again in the OpenStack, in the OpenStack realm. So another notion we've been hearing uh, quite a lot recently uh, is the container notion, right? So you basically restructure the application again, but you're saying you're containerizing the various components and build various uh, microservices out of that application. Obviously, there are lots of, of, of details you need to work out here as well. For example, you know, storage uh, and networking. We've, we've, heard, we've heard the announcement for the networking for containers this morning, which was uh, really good news and should make some of the things way, way more easier. But, you know, still your migrating a, a very complex applications and again, bounding them into the OpenStack realm and, and in, the, you know, in the container realm. Uh, and the additional stuff that you need to, uh, need to work through, you again, for example, networking and, and, and storage, you still bound those things uh, to the specific environment, OpenStack in this case. So there's also another uh, quite new notion, uh, well, not new in the virtu virtualization world, but uh, new in the, in the, in the public, uh, cloud, uh, public cloud offering world, uh, which is called nested virtualization. So you take all your existing application uh, that you already have today running in your environment, and basically you put all of those virtual machines into one single huge virtual machine, and you have uh, all those virtual machines running today nested inside of a virtual machine. So this allows you to have multiple virtual machines bound together and this makes this whole huge uh, VM portable basically, right? But again, you're still not solving the portability issue of the application itself. You're just uh, working around that problem. So another approach uh, is the API portability. So uh, We've all heard uh, VMware's, uh, VMware's proposal for, for, for uh, OpenStack, uh, where you basically install OpenStack on top of VMware and present uh, the OpenStack uh, APIs on top of VMware's workloads. So this is the, the product VMware offers uh, called the VMware uh, Vio. Really cool offering, interesting to, to, uh, to a native OpenStack, uh, use, the native uh, VMware uh, Users, but again, this makes the application live uh, inside the VMware world and end bound to the VMware configurations. And obviously, tomorrow, if you would like to change a specific technology, a specific component, you would have to unbound that and then unwork uh, that configuration. So there's also the PaaS notion, the platform as a service. So for example, uh, you could build your application, basically this, most, in most cases, this requires you rewriting an application uh, in a PaaS manner. 
right? So basically, uh, you change all the flows uh, of of how you of how the application is structured, how you deliver the code, and you use an existing platform to rewrite the code to deliver the application. And there are some some great projects and, and products uh, based on PaaS. Obviously, uh, uh, OpenShift and Cloud Foundry are are one are two examples of those, quite uh, popular out these days. But this no, this this approach again requires rewriting the whole architecture of the application and the structure of the application itself, and you know it requires quite quite heavy lifting. So it's not in place migration of the application itself, rather rewriting the whole thing from scratch. Which again, you know, very, very time consuming and obviously not not suitable for, for all all cases. So uh, there's also the orchestration approach. So once you're able and this basically this approach uh, this approach basically allows you to orchestrate or says that you once you're able to orchestrate the deployment of the whole application. This this uh, this makes the application uh, way more easily deployed on multiple environments, right? So, for example, if you have a fully automated process of deploying an application on VMware, for example, or any other technology, obviously, I'm just picking up on VMware in this case. <laughs> but uh, if you're if you're able to automate the deployment of an application. It would be rather uh, it would be quite easy to to deploy that specific application on a different type of technology and obviously I'm, I'm a bit biased towards this direction and I'm going to talk a bit about uh, our approach to orchestration and how we uh, we help uh, organizations do this migration so a quick uh, quote by by Charles Darwin <laughs> uh, he's saying uh, basically that it's not the strongest species that survives, it's the one most ad adaptable to change. And we know that, you know, from look, looking at history in, in the past uh, few years, there has, there's been tremendous changes uh, in the technologies and the adoptions of various technologies in, in the open source world, but also, you know, as general in, in, the, in the IT uh, world. So we've seen OpenStack, uh, we've seen uh, containers, we've seen Kubernetes, and there's, I think, the waves of, of uh, new technologies that are arriving going quicker and quicker. So change is always happening. And this is the second quote, which unfortunately I couldn't find the source. I think, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, I couldn't find the source of, of, of this quote, but uh, our CDO constantly says that, you know, given from his perspective, uh, and, and obviously quite a, quite a long experience in the industry. So the only constant is change, and things always change, right? In 2000, in, in, in the in the in the late 2000s, we had virtualization, which made an, a major transformation in, in how we look at computing. Now we have OpenStack, and now we have open source, which which gains lots of traction and changes the way we think about things. And after that, we have Kubernetes, that again looks at how we structure applications, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the co the only constant is change, and I think it's important to be ready for that change. So what I, what are what we are basically proposing is, you know, what if your cloud? What if you could deploy a specific application on multiple clouds, and it, that the whole process of deploying it would be seamless? So you basically would choose, you know, you, you would have your application, and you would be able to choose where you would like to install it, and the application would be aware of that environment, aware of the of the, of the specific details for each environment. Uh, so you, for you as a user or, or as, a, as, as, as an organization deploying applications, uh, this process would, would be seamless. So three, three key aspects to this approach. The first is open source, right? We're all here because of open source. Open source drives innovation. Uh, and basically, you know, once we collaborate with one another, we we, we definitely achieve uh, we, uh, tremendous tremendous goals. So you know, we're all here basically because uh, because of open source. The second is not less important, uh, if not even more, is open standards. So open standards means we're all speaking the same language. We're all using a standard way to do things. Uh, and I'm going to dive uh, into that a bit uh, in in a second. The third also is important aspect is, is to be able to be trend aware. So if once you have a new cool technology, you can seamlessly play with it. You can seamlessly deploy it and use it. 
but you would also should be able to, to keep on using well-known uh, and proven technologies at the same time. Uh, so this is also a very important aspect uh, when you look at, at, at uh, deploying, at, 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 uh, at, at orchestrating applications. So if you map the, the, the various types of orchestrations, there, there are several, there, there are several uh, key types there. So obviously you all know Project Heat, which is a very OpenStack specific, awesome project uh, uh, to orchestrate workloads in the OpenStack world. So this is basically an infrastructure driven and, and an infrastructure specific orchestration solution obviously for AWS you know the similar for that in AWS is, is cloud formations and every major uh, cloud platform has its own orchestration tools there's also the container specific uh, components so kubernetes is one is one example of them uh, mesos is another example for container uh, container orchestration platform that you could use and and these types of, of, of platforms are bound to containers only so Cloudify is a pure play orchestration tool, meaning it works seamlessly with all tools uh, using a plugin mechanism. I'm going to talk about uh, a bit uh, to that in a, in a second. And it uses the Tosca specification to describe applications uh, in, a, in a standard manner, in a standard language uh, based on a, on a standard uh, by Oasis. So uh, if you look at the Tosca, spec and how you build a Tosca application and how you define the, the, the application blueprint. There are three major, uh, three main aspects to that. The first is the topology, where you, uh, where you describe the topology of the application of multiple components. You have the workflow part, which is how do you actually deploy a specific thing? How do you install something? How do you uninstall it in case you want to uh, revert a specific action you've, you've done? Or how do you scale out uh, new uh, virtual machines or new, new, uh, new database in case something goes wrong, for example? How do you heal a specific failed node? And the third part is the policies, which is the, the notion of what action should I sh should should I uh, should should the system take place? What sh action should the system take place in case something goes wrong or something is happening in the environment? So, for example, you know, I'm seeing lots of traffic. I need to make a decision of what do I do now. I'm seeing a specific VM which is key to my application failing or not responding. What I do now? So this is defined in the policy part. So this is a typical application topology. And you have certain notions uh, in, when describing a topology. You have uh, the node type notion, and there could be multiple node types uh, that you could use. You know, containers, VMs, volumes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And basically, every uh, every uh, component, every major resource that the cloud can provide through an API, we could uh, we could map it to a specific node type and use that within a blueprint. So if there's tomorrow a new service in OpenStack, uh, a new API call in OpenStack that, present, that represents a specific resource, uh, we could map it to a node type and use it within the, the, the application blueprint. There's also the notion of, of connections. Uh, connections in the topology so for example we have our you know our java application which is connected to the mongodb database uh, and you have also notion of, of contained in uh, where basically you describe as part of the technology that the node.js uh, application is contained on a container on a docker container and that container is contained on a virtual machine on run, that runs on openstack for example the, 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 so that specific node type for the VM would be would be a, uh, would be an, an OpenStack VM node type. So the, the topology consists of the types, the node types, and the interfaces. It also consists of uh, of inputs and outputs. So I could define as part of this application blueprint that I'm writing. I could define the inputs to that blueprint. So for example, I want to specify when I running when I'm running my application for the first time, I want to specify the number of 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 uh, web front ends I want to run in my environment. I want to specify a specific IP address that I want to present publicly. I want to specify a specific uh, URL I want to use in that application. So these are, are, are examples for for inputs I could define. 
I could also define outputs. So for example, uh, I'm running a new application, but you know, once the application is running, I want the, I want the blueprint to tell me what's the IP address to access it. I don't want to tell it, I want the application it, itself to tell me how to access it, for example. So these are the, the topology outputs. And also I could define the relationships uh, I've described before, contained in, connected to, etc. And there's also the notion of requirements uh, and capabilities. So I could, uh, I could define specific uh, uh, capabilities for a node type. For example, let's go to the previous uh, sc uh, screen. So in, in this case, I, I could define that the MongoDB node type is basically providing the capability of a database, uh, of a NoSQL database, for example. And then I could uh, define uh, uh, for this Java app, I could define a, a requirement for it to, to, to have a, a MongoDB a node type. So this allows me to do a very sophisticated mix and matching for specific, uh, for specific, uh, res for specific resources and configurations that I can use uh, within the application. So the second part is the workflows. And basically, the, the, uh, in, the, in this part, I describe like the actual actions I should be taken, I could be taken as part of this application. So, how do I install a specific node type? How do I un uninstall that specific node type? How do I configure the database? How do I scale out a database, for example? Uh, and this mechanism is written is basically a Python code that you could, you know, you could. Uh, could be basically implementing whatever you would like in, in, this, in this part. And we have lots of thoughts on, on, on multiple possible uh, integrations with, with uh, declarative uh, workflow mechanisms that are existing out there. So, you know, I've just uh, taken a few notes uh, here for, for a few examples, obviously Mistral for, in the, for the OpenStack world, but also quite uh, cool, cool tools out there to, to, that do, you know, workflows really well as well. So CloudSlang and StackStorm are really two cool to, uh, tools that we're thinking of integrating with. And the third part of the application uh, blueprint is policies. And in this part, I basically describe on how do I react uh, when things go wrong or things go right or when things are happening in my environment. So I'm basically monitoring the application constantly. And in case I need to take some certain action, I can define those actions as part of the policies. So currently, our implementation is based on, on Riemann, uh, which is uh, also another open source project. And you, you can write the policies themselves in closure code. Obviously, you can do a lot of cool, still, cool, uh, cool stuff uh, here as well. And we also have some thoughts on possible future integrations, but uh, this area is a bit uh, less defined from a Tosca perspective, so we are, we are exploring in this area as well. So once I've written my, my Tosca application, uh, Cloudify basically takes that Tosca blueprint, including all the inputs I'm providing to deploy an application, and it uses multiple plugins to provision monitor, configure that specific application. And I have multiple types of plugins. For example, I have the infrastructure service plugins, I have container specific plugins, uh, uh, configuration management plugins, and also monitoring plugins that I could use. So for example, I could use you know, diamond mechanism and various uh, technologies to implement uh, those parts. And this architecture basically allows me to use multiple types uh, of configuration, multiple types of technologies in a single application blueprint. So again, imagine the in, the in the blueprint itself, I'm just describing my application, but all the pieces of the puzzle are basically, I can change them if I would like, and these are the details I would need to figure out when I change specific technologies. And this basically allows me to, to describe a, not only you know application that is bound to the OpenStack, but could be used in multiple technologies. So for example, I could use you know, the, 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 the OpenStack virtual machine, I could use a Docker container as part of OpenStack, but I could also use, as part of the same application, uh, Docker, con uh, Docker containers that are managed by, the, by an external Kubernetes cluster that I have you know, uh, separately from OpenStack or on top of OpenStack as, as, as part of the Magnum project, for example. So this is really allows me uh, dynamically and, and uh, 
use multiple technologies as I need them, but also rely on, on existing technologies uh, if I would like to keep using them uh, as part of the application itself. So to talk a bit, uh, to talk a bit about specifically about two use cases with, uh, we are in engagement right now. The first is TD Bank that uses Cloudify to, to provision applications and to manage applications on multiple environments. So they have uh, basically multiple environments and OpenStack and on VMware. And they, first of all, they would not look like to be bound to any specific technology. And they would like to make the decision, you know, based on, on, on business rules. For example, a specific application needs to live in OpenStack, uh, you know, to be cost effective or, or the SLA is, is, is good enough or to be, you know, to a specific DMZ, for example, uh, such, uh, such uh, use cases. So again, you know, for them, open source is really important. The standard part is really, really key because you know this is not something Cloudify invented. This is basically an industry standard that we're just implementing. So it's not up to Gigaspaces, for example, or to Cloudify. Uh, you're not bound basically to this product. You can reuse the specific application uh, because this is an open standard uh, that we are using, and this is like really key, I think, to to, to many of our of our uh, users today. Uh, the second interesting use case is in the uh, is in the NFV in the telco world. So TD, uh, so uh, Deutsche Telekom are looking to implement an NFV environment, and they're looking for an open source uh, Mano orchestrator. So uh, the application management part there is done by Cloudify using OpenStack and Chef, for example. And we have a, a, a showcase where we deploy a clear water application, which is kind of like this Skype equivalent. You can you know. Using Clearwater application, you can do video chatting and stuff like that, and it consists of uh, different uh, microservices that interact together to build uh, this this uh, video uh, video streaming video uh, chatting service. Uh, so this is again uh, implemented uh, using Cloudify as well, where Cloudify is is the management part in the uh, as part of the uh, the Etsy model. So one more last thing I would like to show today. And it is, this is our uh, Cloudify Composer. So we have a UI Composer where basically you can drag and drop various uh, node types as part of the Tosca spec. And this allows you to, uh, to structure and to build the topology of the application using a simple web UI tool. So you, have, you know, just go through a web browser uh, and, and this basically lets you Get get uh, get uh, uh, writing application very quickly. So instead of you know learning the whole DSL from 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 scratch on how you describe Tosca spec, uh, you just go to the to the composer and you know using a simple web uh, web UI tool, you could create uh, seamlessly uh, uh, Tosca blueprints that you could use within Cloudify. So this is actually, you know, this is uh, this is not yet GA. We are releasing our first uh, version of the composer on uh, November 30th. Uh, all you're all welcome to to go to the giga, to the Cloudify and get Cloudify.org website uh, and to get the, the the sense and feel of of Cloudify uh, and how you orchestrate applications. So thank you all. And I'll be happy to take questions if you have any. And this is the QR code for the slide deck. I know some of you have been taking pictures. So you can just sc scan the, the, the QR code here and, uh, and get uh, access to the presentation itself. And I'll be happy to take questions. And there's a mic over there if, you're have, if you have any questions. No questions? All right, thank you all, and I'll, I'm here in case uh, if you don't have anything offline.